So over the last few months, I've somewhat made a name for myself as the hand wiring guy. If you don't know what that means, go check out my channel and you'll very quickly find out what exactly that means. But with that said, I'm also just a collector of keyboards. Now, Keychron is a very popular keyboard brand and you've probably heard of them, but I never really had an interest in any of their boards because, well, I don't like 60% and larger boards and that's primarily what they do. But when they announced this here, the Keychron Q9, I was pretty interested. So what I did is I reached out to them, they sent me one, I've been using it for a few days and I wanna talk about it today because there's some pretty cool stuff with this board. When it comes to pricing for this kit, I did wanna go over this really quick because I think it sits in a very nice price point for a 40% board where typically you pay more for less. This one is coming in at 139 or 149 for the bare bones kit, which does not include key capture switches and it depends on if you get a knob or not, it's $10 more with a knob. And then it comes in at 159 or 169 for the actual fully assembled kit, which includes keycaps and switches. I recommend if you are gonna pick this up, go with the actual fully assembled kit because it's only $20 more than the bare bones kit and it includes keycaps and switches which the keycaps are pretty good quality and the switches are also pretty good so it's kind of a no-brainer in my opinion but with that said let's hop into actually looking at this now we're just going to unbox it show you what comes in the box and then we'll talk about some of the actual specs on it so when you first open the box you're going to get greeted by the quick start guide which i don't really pay attention to because i program all my boards from scratch i don't really follow in the default layers but this basically just goes over what the layers do and the switch on it because it can switch between mac and pc default layers which is pretty nice it has a switch for that but I just put that off to the side because I don't use that. Comes with this, which basically just says don't bend your pins because it is hot swap, so don't bend your pins. Comes with a manual, which, I mean, let's be honest, who reads a manual? I, I wish companies would just probably start doing manuals online because really no one reads a manual. But then you're greeted by the main attraction here, which is obviously the keyboard. We're gonna put that off to the side. In the bottom, you have a screwdriver, which is very nice and includes a Phillips screwdriver. It also includes the Allen key to actually open up the case, a switch puller, and then a keycap puller. Then up top here, it includes the spare keycaps, depending on if you are setting it up for Mac or Windows by default. So mine came configured for Mac by default, but if you are on Windows, you might want to switch these out to put the actual Windows keycap on. Then it also includes in here some spare screws and some spare feet for the bottom if you ever need to replace that or you lose one. Let's be honest, we all lose screws when we take these keyboards apart, so that, that is nice. But the main attraction in this box that actually caught my attention was this braided cable. I don't know if this is color matched to each board. I assume it is because I got the blue one and this is obviously blue. What's really nice about this braided cable is that it includes a USB-C right there that you can see. And you can just kind of pop that in if you're on USB-A or you can just use USB-C. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the board apart and kind of look at the insides of it. Because there is some stuff when I first got this that I found was pretty cool inside. But there is one potential thing that could be bad, but it's really the only thing I found. So let's take a look. Now what I'd like to mention first is the overall look of it. Because this blue is very nice. It has a lot of fingerprints on it kind of right now. But it's very nice, especially with the gold accented screws. You can see it looks very nice this board, and you can see it kind of has some dust on it from me using it for the last week. What I'd also like to mention here is this top part here, it is USB-C, which is nice, but this switch here is very cool because you can see it says switch between, if I flip it this way, Windows and Mac. I don't know where the code is actually doing anything with this, but that basically just switches between layer zero and layer one, or layer one and two, if you're speaking code or not. Then also it has a knob here, which is very nice. I don't know if you can replace this with a switch. I didn't look. We're going to take a look when we open this in a second because I want to see if you can just replace it with a switch, which I do assume you should be able to. This is an aluminum knob, which is nice. Put that back on. And yeah, let's just take it apart now. So what I like about this board is that it's very easy to disassemble. There's only six screws on the back, and then it basically just pops up. It's like a three-part, so you have the PCB, and then you have the actual back plate, and then the bezel on top. Now what we can do is just lift this off, and you can see there's the nice hefty back plate, just like so. And then what you're greeted with here is the backing of the actual board. So this is the PCB here. And this is like a, I guess it's almost like a tape mod. It's like a piece of tape on there. It's kind of like a thick piece of cardboard you can kind of see here, which is nice, which just kind of protects everything from shorting out on the bottom plate. What's really nice that I want to talk about here is this section right over here. You can see that this is a daughter board connected to the main PCB, and that's where the USB-C is. So if you happen to break the USB port, I believe you could probably reach onto Keychron and they'll be able to send you this part here instead of a whole new PCB to where you can just replace that, which is very nice considering that's a very commonly broken thing. Now, the other thing I'm noticing on here too is that you can see here where the knob is. So there's the knob on the other side. It looks like you could put a switch here, but you would have to modify it a little bit probably because it looks like the actual encoder is soldered on. I guess there aren't hot swap encoders, but that is something you could probably mod. But what we're gonna do now is dive deeper into this. So we're gonna take off the knob first, just to make it easier. And then what I wanna do is disconnect this here. Now you should be able to lift that up and you'll see that this is just connected here. It's just a color matched part of the actual switch that can come off. You can see 
right there. And then this should just lift out. And there is the entire PCB assembly. There is the top of the case, the bottom of the case, the knob, and then here is the actual board. I'm not going to dive into taking this entire thing apart because really I don't want to do that. But you can see in the middle here, there is actually also foam in between the switches and the plate, which is really nice. So it is very dampened, a lot of layers between this. But what I want to talk about here is this gasket mount because this is kind of questionable to me. I might just be dumb. I haven't really used a gasket mount board before, but typically when I've thought of a gasket mount keyboard, I've always thought of a type of rubber between the actual board. But if you look here at what they're using, they're using this type of foam. And my worry with that is not that it doesn't work. It works very good. The board is very dampened and sounds great, which you'll see later in the video. But the problem with this, in my opinion, is that I feel this foam will over time wear out and eventually the gasket will get less and less. So that's the only problem I really have. You can see here it is on the other side also. So there's basically just four little double gaskets of foam there. But my worry is that over time this will wear out and the board won't be as gasket mounted as it is right now. But with that said, I'm going to put this back together now and we'll talk a little bit more about it. So overall, a very easy board to actually disassemble and mod, which Keychron boards are known to be modded. It's very common. This board, however, I don't think there's many things that you actually have to mod on it because the stabilizers you'll see in a second are very nice. So now what you can really see here, I don't know if it will show across the video, but you can see that the gasket is doing its job just like so. Show it up here. Maybe you can see just right there how squishy it is. So now what I'd like to do is I just like to take a look at the keycaps real quick. So we're just going to pull one off here like so. And these are their OSA profile, I believe, which you can see they are double shot PBT and they're in their OSA profile, which is, I guess, between like a cherry and like a DSA, maybe. I don't really know how to describe it. Also, I'd like to pull out the switch here. And this is, I believe, a Gatoron Pro Red, which I'm actually surprised with these switches. They feel very nice. I don't know if they're thocky, if that's the word to use. Um, you can decide later with the typing test, but I enjoy them. They, they feel really nice. Um, not really a complaint there. So we'll put this back in, put the keycap back on. Now, what I'd like to talk about is the stabilizers because one of the number one mods that people end up doing on keyboards is stabilizers. But these here, I'm impressed with the stabilizers, especially for being stock. I don't know if they're lubed. Maybe I can take a look real quick and see. And yeah, they are lubed. Okay. Now a little bit messy of lube, I guess, if you can see in there. I don't know if you can see, but they are lubed. So I guess that's why they sound good. They are screw in stabilizers too, which is nice. If you know me from my hand wiring stuff, I only use plate mount because that's all I can use, but screw in are technically better than plate mount stabilizers, but they sound very good and I'm very happy with them. So I wanted to now just talk for a second about some of the quirks on this board because I really only encountered two of them and they're kind of a me problem mostly, but I do just want to mention them. The first one is that in order to get backspace on this, you have to hold the FN and the back key with the default key map. That's very weird to me. I don't know why they wouldn't just make this key a backspace by default because honestly, who's using a forward slash and a pipe key that often? But that's the first thing I changed pretty much immediately got rid of that. But the bigger weird thing to me was that this board really wasn't via compatible out of the box. It might just be a configuration issue since I'm on a Mac. But what I had to do is download a draft file, it's called from their website, pop that into via and then it was actually compatible and it worked and it was detected. So it's not really via compatible out of the box per se. You do have to do maybe a little bit more there. That wasn't really an issue for me anyway, since I use a lot of QMK features that are very advanced and I prefer doing my boards with QMK, which having said that, if you want to look in the description, you will see my entire key map for this board. I do release that for free if you want to take a look at that. Those are really the only quirks I encountered. And now I think what you want to see or hear more say is the actual typing test. So let's let's see how it sounds now. I almost forgot to mention the board does have LED backlighting. As you can see here, it has all your typical things you would expect like patterns and stuff. You can also change all the brightness and whatnot. I have this set up to the knob, which is pretty nice or just click it to turn it off. And you can just kind of cycle through the modes. You know, it does everything you'd expect with a QMK board that has backlighting. But now let's actually type on it. That's the Keychron Q9. I think it's a very cool keyboard from Keychron. First one that actually interested me ever, but it does have that one potential gasket issue that I did have to mention. Other than that, everything about it is awesome. It's a very hefty, like it's a brick of a board. Um, I'm very impressed with it, especially considering the price of 170 
for the fully assembled kit with the knob. With all that said, if you did enjoy this video, you know, give me a like, maybe subscribe if you enjoy it. I plan on doing more videos like this in the future because, well, like I said, I'm also a keyword collector. I don't just do hand-wired projects, so I'm going to start talking about boards that I find interesting. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.